We're here in Cleveland at the Progressive International Motorcycle Show, and I've got actually a really good friend of mine, Gary Seville from Silver Wraith Choppers. Gary, hey, man, it's good to see you. We've had a lot of good times, man. We've been hanging out for, for a number of years now, and I've loved to watch your business grow and uh, all of the different styles of bikes that you get into. You're doing a great job. Um, where, tell us where your shop's at and kind of uh, the name of your shop again, your website. Okay, so uh, it's Silver Wraith Choppers, silverwraithchoppers.com. We're down in uh, Baldwin, Missouri, so just west of St. Louis. Uh, we've actually just moved to a new location. We have a new shop with a full engineering shop now, full service base. So we're getting to the service business, which apparently is where the dollars is and allows me to build these things because uh, there's no money in bike building. There's no money in bike building. You do this as a passion, but you do do all the rest of that. I said doo doo right here in the interview, but we you we you do all the rest of that so that we can afford to do this now. Uh, Tell us about this bike that you've brought here. It's got a kind of a, uh, a sad but cool story of triumph at the end. Tell us about this bike that you brought. So uh, I got a phone call one week from this uh, young guy called Logan, and he said, hey, I've, um, I've got this kind of pile of parts here at this front end. It was all rusted up, a couple of rusty wheels, uh, old Evo engine, a transmission, a couple of bits and pieces. He had been, uh, he'd been working up in uh, North Dakota in the oil fields, and he really wanted this bike. So uh, he gave the parts to a, a builder up there, we don't know who it is, and uh, he gave him a big bag of money and the guy skipped town. Wow. So yeah, it was, uh, it was not good. So, Fortunately not an uncommon story. No, no, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's getting less and less because I think, right. you know, the economy and stuff is kind of sorting through the chaff in the industry. Um, so he approached me and said, hey, can you do something with this? I've got some ideas of what we wanted, which of course, you know me, I throw those in the trash and do what I want. And uh, I, I got it going. I mean, we lost money on this build hand over fist, but it was the right thing to do to get the bike built, to make him happy and kind of pay back a little bit for the bad experience he had had first. Well, and I know you personally, and I know that you're that kind of guy. And that's, that's one of the things. I mean, you'll never make any money in this business, but, man, you got a great reputation. Tell me about this tank. This is, uh, you bought this tank out of JMP Cycles catalog. <laughs> so that tank was uh, my alcohol may have been involved during the design and fabrication of the tank. So we, we cut the panels in about... I don't know, two days. Uh, it took us about five weeks to weld it together. There's 45 separate panels on that tank. There's two at the front which are curved in both directions and to get those to fit took about two days. Just two panels. It's uh, It was a real labor, but it's it's kind of, it's it harkens back to kind of a coffin prism type tank, but it's got its own stance to it. Uh, we got some pictures of it with a big shark fin hanging on the back of it and stuff like that. Um, and all the bits here that are brass and stuff, some of them are bought, the petcock, the, the ice glass on the, on the tank for the fuel, yeah. uh, you know, the on the controls, you know, those kind of things. But now you made a lot of the brass pieces on this, which is kind of a signature of yours yeah. there at Silver Wraith. Um, you, for instance, on the rear end here, you obviously made all of those things and designed that. The, bra the brackets here for the uh, for the sissy bar mounts, which go on top of the plunger, no one's ever done those before. So we we made those. Uh, we we like using brass one because when it cleans up, it, it's a real juxtaposition against the chrome and any paint you put on it. But the other thing is, it's a really tough metal to work with. Uh, it's very unforgiving. Uh, you screw it up, it's done. So you have to throw it away. But we like tough, you know, things like brass washers we made. And actually, the one thing on this bike that no one's ever done before on a plunger rear suspension is we actually managed to get a brake caliper with a rotor to work on the back, which no one's ever done before. It's usually always a drum brake because of the, the two ways it has to move. So it's, uh, yeah. It was an engineering feat. I remember being at the shop. I, I fortunately got to see this go together, and I remember some telephone conversations, and I'd be like, well, how are you going to get that to work? And you'd say, well, I have no bloody idea. <laughs> so it's really a huge engineering feat, and a lot of people won't notice that because uh, not a lot of people do anything with plunger frames for a variety of reasons, but uh, that's one of them is it is it uh, the braking issue is, is a problem. Well, Gary, it's just absolutely beautiful work. Uh, who painted the bike? It was Darren Williams at Liquid Illusions R. He painted the bike, and the guy that probably helped me build the most of this and and just dug in and solved a lot of engineering problems was a guy called Hoops. You met Hoops. 
Uh, he owns Hoops Customs now, actually. He works in the same shop as I do. Uh, and he just, the guy, that man will pick up a piece of metal and tear it apart in seconds. He's just, he's tenacious, he's young. He's a little genius, but yeah. Well, he's got, I wouldn't say genius, but having met him, I would say maybe idiot savant. Yeah, more idiot than savant, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, again, getting Darren killed the paint. Uh, Darren at Liquid Illusions is top notch. He, uh, he uh, is going to, I got to get him to paint uh, my Road King. I got to send all those parts up there uh, that I tore down and kind of made it look like that old knucklehead. I want him to to paint that bike because man he just does beautiful work well gary thank you so much for being at the progressive international motorcycle show thanks for being you um i feel like when i when i'm with you i should always do the bob barker thing don't forget people spay and neuter your pets uh, uh look gary up silverwraithchoppers.com and uh hit him up if you're ever coming through st louis again he's he's just outside in baldwin thanks gary so much thanks for being at the progressive international motorcycle show we got more great interviews check us out on facebook